Hey guys, and welcome to another awesome Immortal Empires game between myself as the Toon Kings, going up against the Master, a Rubber Duck of War, as the Wood Elves. So, starting on the front here for the Wood Boys, we are going to have a couple of units of the Dryads, really, really strong in the front. Decent armor class here at 60, magical attacks, physical resistance, immune to psychology, making them a very, very good hybrid stable frontline unit. Over in the front, we are going to have the double hero with the Way Stalkers, here with the Hawkish Precision, and then also the Arrows of Kurnos. The second one here, also going to have the ability of the Potion of Speed, giving it a little bit more speed there across the battlefield and that reduction on Vigor. In the trees, we are going to have a very sneaky vanguard unit of the Regiment of Renown. So the Wardens of Sith Rao with the anti-large armor piercing and armor sundering, making them incredibly powerful. Also here, when in the trees, they are going to have the Guardians of the Wildfoot, which is going to be given that bonus versus large and that charge versus large defense. They're also going to be having the charge reflection, which means when you charge on, they're going to be reflecting some of that damage there coming back on their opponents. So a really strong unit with silver shields here in the trees. That's uh, rather scary indeed. In the backside here, we are going to be having some of the Glade Guard with the Starfire Shafts. They're going to be having the magic and then also fire damage with bucket loads of armor piercing. They're going to be supported by the Eternal Guard, some here with shields, some without here dotted throughout the back line. In the sky, we are going to have the legendary Great Eagle. Ducky really wanted a meme here with this one, but this thing actually does pretty well in this game. But 120 speed, good 400 uh, weapon strength, and, you know, decent charge bonuses. Makes it a pretty strong melee combatant here up against the Tomb Kings. In the sky, the Spellweaver of the Beast Magic, here with the Wild Heart, the Blessing of the Ancients, and then also here the Arcane Conduit with the Spells of the Flock of Doom, the Transformation of Gudon with Loic's Blessing, and then also the Opal Amulet. So nice build here coming for Ducky from myself, pretty wide front line. So we are going to have Skeleton Spearman here on the outside and then Skeleton Warriors in the middle. So a nice eight units, I think seven or eight units here in the middle. On the flanks we are going to have two units of the Skeleton Chariots alongside some Skeleton Horsemen and the Nekahara Horsemen. Nekahara Horsemen, very powerful here, decent armor. Of course here that healing is very powerful indeed. In the middle pocket, we are going to have Ark in the Black, and he's going to be coming on the front door here of the Wood Elves today with the Life Leeching, the Curse, alongside here the abilities of the Spirit Leech and the Aspect of the Dread Knight. Given those magical attacks, I didn't want any ethereal units ruining my day. So the Tomb Blade of Arkin giving all those summons of the Skeleton Warriors, and the Staff of Nagash giving lots of Winds of Magic. Aris Gunners here are going to be bonking on the front door there of Arkin. He's going to be uh, taking that there like a full chat that he is, with also the Liber Mortis, giving that physical resistance and leadership bonuses. In the back here, we are going to have the Bony Boys with the Chosen of the Gods, the Ubu Shopti here with their bows ready to go. And of course, they have that really good split shot that's very good up against Infinite. Infantry. These bad boys are pretty decent in melee as well, so they should do pretty well here up against the Wood Elves. Over on the right hand side, we are going to have three more units of cavalry and then two more units of the skeleton chariots. Now, we do actually have a sneaky unit of wardens, of course, in the trees, so you'll see here they do pay dividends rather quickly. So the front line is going to be diving forward here. We have uh, skeleton horsemen trying to come around this uh, bit of a precipice in the way, this uh, nice. Uh, I think it's a bit of a stone statue with some faces on it. It's going to be kind of in my way here. Skeleton Spearmen, of course, have taken up most of the gap. But we do need to push back here up against the Wood Elves. The Glade Guard are going to be shooting into the front. Pretty decent AP and magic damage. So they're going to be getting into the skeletons and doing some pretty nice work indeed. Coming over the top, the Eagle is going to be fostering towards most of the chariots. And with that weapon strength, it really will take down models. So we're coming across here with most of the Nekahara Horsemen, trying to get around the flanks, trying to shut down a lot of these Glade Guard. So chariots coming around the flanks here. We have Arkin in the middle, which is going to have Spirit Leech going down on the Lord as we're shooting here at close range with the Chosen. And then we're also going to be having a Summer, but it's not like that doesn't go off. It's like Arkin is going to be diving in. And here we're going to get some pretty decent work going up against the Lord Choice. So the Spellweaver of Beast here on an Eagle is going to try and get away, but we have some cavalry nice and close by. We get a summon here of the Great Eagle, and as she tries to get away, we are going to get the rear charge here with Arkin, and they're going to be grinding here in the backside, and she's not going to be able to fly, but the Eagle is going to be pressuring up against Arkin, just being a bit of a nightmare in total. In the trees, a huge mistake from me, but really good stuff from Ducky. The Wardens of Sith Rao are going to be fighting in the trees, up against these chariots, and anti-large armor piercing with armor sundering is so devastating up against these armored chariots. So they're going to fall incredibly quickly. You can see here I panic like there's no tomorrow. 
and just force marching these scouts and chariots through the trees and the wardens already up to 14 kills and probably serious damage value 600 already with two minutes in the game Front line is going to be engaged. We are going to have the Skeleton Warriors. Skeleton Spearmen fighting up against Dryads who will inevitably lose. But I need to get most of the cavalry in the back here, as you can see, shutting down most of the Glade Guard. Cavalry's going to be moving, going to be shooting here from the Chosen of the Gods. The Lord Choice really struggling to get away. Going to be getting hit from behind here by the Nekahara Horsemen, which means she cannot fly. We actually have a horseman in the front, which is preventing her from being a little bit too fast. Another summon here of the Great Eagle. Probably wants to get in the back there and compromise the Chosen of the Gods. But we are going to see a flock of doom in the middle, taking down some of my skeleton spearmen. So good work there from Ducky. He is really trying to get away. I feel quite sorry here. My Lord Choice is butchering the Spellweaver. The Opal Amulet has been activated. The Nekahara Horsemen are charging in, preventing her from getting away. And now we also have a Spirit Leech. I'm just diving my cavalry in. Rear charging where I can and forcing this Carter and Lord Choice to get pushed off the edge of the map. I love the new death magic. This hand coming over the top looks so goddamn awesome as it just sucks the life away here from the Spellweaver. And this Great Eagle is trying its absolute best. But you can see so much damage coming down on the Lord Choice. She's looking at 124 health, not shattered yet. Negative 43 leadership, negative 55. And there we go. She's going to be shattered. She's going to be going off the edge of the map. And that there, really sadly, is going to be a big loss for ducking. In the back side, we do see the Great Eagle chasing down up against my Nekahara Horseman, and uh, you know, this big thing will be pecking, getting those claws in deep up against all these bony boys. As we're moving through the battlefield, trying to find some good targets in the back, as I hear we're going to be shooting up against the Horseman, and Ducky's main target is to take down most of my mobility. If he can do that, there's nothing that can compromise all these ranged units. So we are going to get Eternal Guards moving over to the middle to try and fight here up against my Horsemen. In the front, most of the boys are going to be losing Skeleton Spearmen. Pretty decent melee defense and good bonus for Slash because Dryads do count as infantry, so they are going to be struggling there in the middle. Ubu Shopti going to be firing in the front, trying to do as much damage up against Eternal Guards and Cavalry as they can. But we do see here the Eternal Guard having a bit of a Spirit Leech for me. I knew they were going to be a bit of a nightmare, so I want to take down as many models as I possibly can. Skeleton Warren's going to be charging forward some of these Skeleton Horsemen as well. Need to get in the back compromise some of these waste orca tools that uh, you know have so much missile strength lots of ammunition and good range and the fact they also have stalk makes them impossible to find now we do see in the middle Nekahara Horseman horse we're going to be chasing in the back here up against some of these glade guard i'm really trying to pile on as much pressure as i possibly can in the backside here we have more starfire shafts they're going to be shooting here up against my skeleton chariots and uh, they'll do some devastating damage indeed some of these skeleton chariots have massive models and of course, yeah, that armor piercing really does do quite well. We do get a nice charge here through the middle. Skeleton chariots are incredibly good. The fact they're unbreakable and they have so much access to healing is fantastic. And they're going to cycle through here up against the Starfire Shaft. They do some good damage and they break. But most of my front line here is going to be dwindling. Mounts of Power is even, actually, if not in Ducky's favor here, considering I've even taken down the Lord Choice. We do see a Spirit Leech down here in the middle. That's going to go down on the Waystalker. I'm just really trying to take down as many of these single entities as I can. Stuff from the Gash has been activated, getting more Winter Magic in the middle. And we see here that the Glade Guard Starfire Shafts are getting moved off the edge. I'm going to move my Lord Choice. Arkan is going to get into the backside, cackle as he does, taking down as many models as he possibly can. In the front, we're going to be dwindling here. Armor Sundered in the front, thanks to the Warden of Sithral. Coming through, doing all the disasterly damage with 59 melee attack. They are really scary indeed. So Nekahara Horseman are going to go fat, juicy rear charge on the drives here in the pocket. Lovely damage indeed. But we do see the uh, Ubu Shopti in the back here. And they're going to be firing amongst the Wardens of Sith Rao. And uh, yeah, they're going to be doing some good damage. I really moved those across. I need to delete this nice expensive unit of infantry as quickly as possible. I needed to grab pretty much every single morsel of balance of power I could because it was really shifting away from me here. Spirit Leech is going down on the Waystalkers. And then, of course, try to shoot down as much of this elite unit as I possibly can. So the Lord Choice in the back does break as many of the Glade Guard as I can. I kill as many as possible, hoping they don't return. We have more units of the Starfire in the pocket here as well. And we are going to get a return here. It looks like from my Nekahara Horseman. I'm really trying to force off the Glade Guard. There's so many across the battlefield. They're really, really resilient as well. And that DPS is so strong. I, I really have to throw everything here to make sure they uh, get off the edge of the battlefield. Now, we can't really stop here up against the Waystalkers. They have so much missile strength, they'll do good work here up against my chariots. In fact, he's playing really well. King Spears and Dryads has a bit of a buffer here to protect his single entities, so he can hopefully pull apart and shut down most of my mobility units. In the back side, Dryad's going to be chasing after the Chosen of the Gods. Really nice stuff from Ducky, trying to compromise these where he can. Balance of Power is really looking horrible for me. 
My chariots are going to be cycle charging here through the middle. The Great Eagle has done some brilliant work so far, up to 28 kills. And we can see here that the Waystalker is also just going to be bonking onto the flanks here of these chariots. They really are struggling in the middle. Waystalker is still trying to do as much as they can. They're looking rather healthy, actually, which is a bit of a shame there for me. In the backside, we are actually going to be having the Nekahara Horseman. They do manage to come back here, and they do break the Glade Guard. A couple of units of the Eternal Guard on the side, but there's so much to micro here from me and Ducky. And uh, this Great Eagle, I just I don't know what to do about it. I, I have nothing to protect, and my Lord Choice is busy. He's coming in. The Staff and Gash has been activated. I do get into the trees. I managed to get a Spirit Leech off up against the Waystalker, but I kind of need to engage in melee combat now. We do see that the Chosen of the Gods are going to be shooting. I'm really trying to get onto those Eternal Guards and the majority of the spearmen here in the pocket. We do see some of the wardens really chasing after Ark, and if they do get a uh, even just an, an, a morsel of their faction unit on top of Arkin, he's dead within a matter of seconds. So I summon a bit of a buffer here with these skeleton warriors. Going to be charging forward, just trying to keep these boys busy, but you can see my skeleton chariots, they, just, they have nowhere to call home. There's nowhere to run, there's nowhere to hide. Uh, sadly here, the wood elves really have triumphed on top of my chariots. So the Skeleton Warriors are going to be moving forward, trying to see if we can, uh, you know, try and compromise what we can. Arkin is going to be coming forward, trying to rear charge where possible. But now we have the Chosen of the Gods fighting here up against Mass Dryads. That fear is going to go quite a long way. But sadly, not up against these Dryads that also have fears that will counteract that. Uh, but yeah, fighting quite nicely. Most of these are going to break and shatter here, which is quite interesting. But now we have the Great Eagle coming over the top. Dryad's really going to buffer and prevent all of the damage here coming on this ginormous beast. But these Chosen of the God are not known for their melee prowess. They do actually have 30 melee attack on 44 melee defense. And then, of course, you know, plus that charge bonus and a good armor piercing weapon stats. They really can do quite well, but they're going to be nothing here for the Wardens of Sith Rao. These beautiful beings do charge through. And, uh, yeah, they're going to stroke and poke here up against the Chosen of the God. The Leap of Mortis does get activated because Dryads do have magical attacks. So, they are going to circumvent all that physical resistance. I really try my best here to get as much as I possibly can out of the game. I charge here in the middle up against the Waystalker. The Potion of Speed has been activated. I think it's a one-use ability. And, uh, you know, I'm really trying to get Spirit Leeches. I'm trying to do as much damage as I possibly can. You can see the Waystalker is kind of wavering here in the middle. And there we go. That is going to be Arminos's GG's. And well played to Ducky for an excellent game indeed. So really, really good stuff from Duck. It was a really fun build and a, a pretty sweet game. And I hope you guys enjoyed that one. Uh, we had 185 there for the Spellweaver of Beast. I think he was a little bit annoyed about this one. It, it kind of sucked. Most of the time it ended up getting caught kind of behind Cavalry. Or, you know, it kept getting hit so it couldn't fly in the air. And I really felt for him because it was a it was a bit of a crappy element to the game. I think if he'd had that, maybe it would have been a, a considerably better win than if he if he wasn't trapped on the floor there. But that is maybe a mechanic there that CA could do with sorting out just a little bit so that uh, you know, perhaps, you know, maybe charge speed could be taken away where it's not just butchering all these units that kind of land attack and then they're kind of trapped on the floor. But 185 there for the Lord Choice, one, uh, 980 there for the Wardens of Sith Rao, so not quite paying for themselves, but still very, very good damage. Uh, 550 there for the Waystalker, 940 with a bit of an MP fee there coming out of the Great Eagle. Um, I really quite like that. It was a bit of a meme, but at the same time, it did really well up against Chariots. It was doing really well up against Cavalry. It was uh, you know, a bit of a nice counter there up against the Ushotti. It could put a bit of pressure there on Ark and the Black. Uh, yeah, I, I really quite liked it, actually. I thought the way Ducky used it was, you know, quite excellent indeed. 660 there for the Waystalker with 700, 360, 420, and 730. Even with me peppering them every single moment of the battle, they still got their value, which just explains how great the Gladeguard Starfire Shafts, and they are going to be devastating up against factions like Nurgle and any other ones, like maybe even the Greenskins that have so much healing it is um, you know, a bit oppressive. So 550, 670, 300, 550, and 680 there from the Dryads, with 830, 530, and 400 from the Eternal Guards. From myself, Ark of the Black, 2,355. He is an absolute monster. Big fan of him, with 1,840 from the Chosen of the Gods, which is probably one of my favorite units in the Tomb King roster. Certainly top three. So 54, 500, 130, and 500 for the Skeleton Chariot. Something that I'm pretty poor at is dealing with chariots. Kind of forget about them. Kind of forget how squishy they are. And, uh, you know, I don't always mark them as well as I could. But, you know, I'm sure if I played again, I might be able to do a little bit better there with those. 350, 780, 95, and 500 from the Nikahara Horsemen. Still as powerful as always. I really, really do like these units. Some of the best mid-tier cavalry in the game. 150, 300 there from the Skeleton Horsemen. With 200, 170, 270 for the Skeleton Spearmen. 
with 280, 300, 130, 300, and 200 from the Skeleton Warriors. So I hope you guys enjoyed this one. If you did, please smash that like button. Feel free to leave a comment down below and subscribe if you haven't already. In the comments, I will be leaving a link to a Rubber Duck Awards channel. Do go check him out if you don't know him already. A fantastic caster, as I'm sure most of you know. Other than that, I've been your boy Logic. Take care of yourselves. See you all soon.